Oh, that's how it works. Hello, folks. Welcome back to another uh, hobo review of. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's right. Monday Night Raw. It was an OK Raw, considering it was just the Raw after SummerSlam. I'm having so much time. I need I need some water for a change. Uh, I should always hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And to talk about hydration, a couple things of business to go through. First of all, for NXT TakeOver, I correctly predicted three out of five matches and the two bonus stipulations. I did pick the... Which was the snooze? Oh, no, I didn't get the snooze right. Wow, the first time I did that. I should have went with my feeling. I got my stolen cold lock of Io Shirai winning and the match of the night with the Velveteen Dream, Peter Doon, Roger Strong match. So therefore, because I got three out of five right, remember, that bonus is always a tiebreaker. I am inside the head, indeed, of one Stephanie McMahon. However, though, well, actually, I did fare a little bit better. Although, one's up for debate. Let's see your match of the night. That's probably it. I didn't get that. That was long. It's my stone cold lock. Oh, yeah. So, I got... So, for SummerSlam... I myself, too, because actually that match was pretty good. It was a typical... New Japan, AJ Styles, 15-minute match. Building for stuff. So for SummerSlam, I got 7 out of 12 matches right. The one match up for debate still is the Randy Orton match versus Kofi Kingston. I don't know who won. They didn't say who won. They didn't say who got disqualified. They just, like, rung the bell. It was weird. So I figured Randy Orton won because Kofi went nuts. And I did get the match of the night. The Stone Cold Lock. You know what? That was pretty much a snooze, too. I got my th three out of four bonus points right. And there was no Toronto screw job. That would have been good to see. But that did not happen. But because I got eh, the seven out of 12 right. Again, did I read the mailbox of Stephanie McMahon? Did I hack into her email? But obviously figured out what Stephanie K. McMahon was thinking. Now that I'd like to shout out to three people for showing up for my SummerSlam show. I do apologize. It was potchy on my part. Um, I've begun to figure out the network issues, which is a good sign, because I know a lot of people have been having network problems. And I think if you use Firefox, Mozilla, instead of Chrome or Internet Explorer, Explorer it does work better. So I don't know if the WWE is trying to cut back on hobos like me doing things well, I probably shouldn't be doing, or doing things for I'm not paying their, their tiered ridiculousness. Um, so I do apologize for it. But again, I'd like to thank these three people. And let's see. I should pull that up too. So I know I know what I'm talking about. Because nor normally nine times. Or actually probably seven times out of ten. I have no clue what I'm doing. In fact, with me, I always give myself 2% botch at all times. No, I don't want this. Wrestling card. Where's my wrestling with all my rewards for people. Oh, there we go. Let's see here. Oh, wow. That's, this is going to be pretty simple. So, Rodrigo Bernardo. Nardo. Bernardo. There we go. I think I said that name right. I do apologize if I got your name wrong. Listen, if, if, if you saw me copying this down after some 
Miami sunrises or Miami sunsets. And that was actually pretty good. That was actually pretty good for a change. So that so that's close. So Rodrigo, Bernardo, you sir, just got the six count. Little Fettuccine 69. You're playing the air drums. And Jace White. Oh, that's the easiest name I've said in a while. Normally, they have some weird convoluted thing. You, sir, you're doing your briefcase boombox routine. Wow, those are the three people that chatted with me. So, you know what that means? There's more room for all. 
let's talk about Raw. Um, it started off kind of very recap heavy, very match light. Actually, they don't have a lot of matches though, I guess. I don't know, let me go over things and then you can always leave a comment. And I do have to check my email soon, actually. Something I rarely do. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Um, so I'll, I'll check it today, and if I saw anyone left a comment, I'll send you a video tomorrow. Those uh, recaps from SummerSlam. Uh, Seth came out with a promo, then AJ Styles with a club. I like the fact that AJ Styles and the club wear the belts the way they should be worn. It just looks so much better. Uh, he challenges Seth to a champion versus champion match. Should be interesting, so we'll see what happens there. Um, well, we will see what happens because the next major pay per view is Survivor Series. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's in thanks. Yeah, that's yeah, that's November, September, October. Yeah, that sounds right. So Survivor Series. So let's see what happens. Uh, the Street Profits come out. They have to hydrate because obviously they went to St. Catherine Street and had way too much fun while they drove to Montreal, went to St. Catherine Street, had way too much fun, then drove all the way back to, Mont to Toronto. I'm just hydrating mainly because I'm thirsty. And I think today, for a spell, it was like 98 degrees outside. And I have to go hobo, so I have to properly hydrate myself. In, in case I have to get into a little bum fight on bum fight action. Uh, and then, the, so the Street Prophets were there. Sami Zayn starts to run them down. Then Samoa Joe just says, whatever, Sami Zayn, I'm going to beat you up because you deserve it. Because cause you're a wuss. Makes sense. Makes sense. So the first match of the night, we have Samoa Joe versus Sami Zayn. The crowd likes Sami Zayn. In fact, heal Sami. Ole, 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 ole. The crowd was chanting for heal Sami. The crowd likes actually both of them. Of course, Joe comes out. Wherever Joe goes, he's university love. Joe. Joe, 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 Joe. Um, this was actually a vicious show. Uh, Sammy got some shots in on Joe. Uh, not a smart thing to do, Sammy Zane. Because eventually Joe starts using the Simone headbutt. Puts him into the Coquina clutch. And he's forced to tap out even though he was almost good night time. And this was a fun match. The Mojo obviously won with the Coquina Clutch. Eh, it was a ham sandwich match. My only thing is they keep on jumping up poor Zami Zane. Poor Sammy. One day he'll win a match. Then the Miz comes out. Uh, Dolph comes out, starts to Try to have a promo. He j <laughs> oh, hey. Cole was just making fun of Renee. I think for being Canadian. Which is good. Good job, Michael Cole. Renee. Boo, Canada. Um, so when Dolph came out, there were Goldberg chants. Dolph was complaining about how he was so beat up. He can't wrestle. And then, of course, he decided to jump the Miz. Come on, go to commercial break. Ding, ding, ding. Ring the bell. And then the match starts. Um, it was a fun match. I, I know Dolph started to beat up The Miz. It went to commercial. They did not do a picture-in-picture. Uh, -picture. So the next thing you see, The Miz beating up Dolph. Then he was hitting the, those uh, running knees, the, the, both running knees, almost like very much like a dry he does. But he really gets, he really gets some hop on him. Because Dolph's standing there, so his knees actually come up to his shin. It's actually really cool. He hit that twice. Then fly, Miz, fly! Because he did, of course, one of my favorite moves, a double axe handle smash. Yes. Ugh. I like that. Um, 
If the Miz gets stabbed into the ring post, you can see him literally clap the ring post. Because it's aluminum, I'm sure it might have stung his palms, but the Miz knows how to take a bump like that. Uh, he does. He has a new move. He has that, like, um, it's like a sciatic nerve breaker. Because he picks him up and then does a code breaker on the knee. But if you know anything about, about anatomy and physiology, it's like right on the hamstring, but this land like, like right on the side where the sciatic nerve is. Ooh, that's a super Charlie horse waiting to happen. Then he applied the figure four. He begins to arch his back and tat. I got the win. The Miz won with a figure four. Uh, Dolph had to tap out. So that was really cool. Um, the Miz obviously wins. He starts to head back. Dolph. <laughs> Dolph was channeling his inter Monty Python because he's like, that's just a flesh wound. And I was picking, cracking up laughing. I was like, whoa! Monty Python and the Holy Grail. The man who's saying, me, 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 me. So that was kind of cool. And it's just a flesh wound. I'll bite your leg off. I was going to say that next. But then Miz hit the skull crushing finale on him. Overall, because of the new move, it was it was quick but kind of innovative. And of course, once you get Monty Python involved in any wrestling match, it's definitely going to get a cheeseburger rating from this guy. Uh, Becky Lynch gets a promo. We have Elias versus Ricochet. Oh, and the show is the show is watching. Instead of having commercials, they were showing the Kenta versus Shibata. So, are we going uh, to... I wonder if we'll have Kenta versus Shibata come Wrestle Kingdom this January. That is the one night I think. I don't know. I hope I don't... That would be... Rough. But we'll see. So um, we had Elias versus Ricochet was next next match. Elias again, he just fights some bunch of woo chops and punches. Uh, Elias, <laughs> he did that. I mean, he did a high back body drop onto Ricochet. I don't know how Ricochet could fly like that. He went up and up and up. And up and oh, up and up, and he came crashing down flat on his back, too, to his credit. Uh, th then this match was really botchy, though. I mean, he missed a couple things uh, the top rope, sunset flip, power bomb pin was. Uh, I really hate to say it, but even though Ricochet won with kind of that. Sunset flip thing. This match was not. This match just kind of seemed tossed together. There's very little chemistry between Elias and Ricochet at this point. I hate to do this, Ricochet. To me, you'll always be Puma and King Ricochet. But wow, you put on a can of soup match. Then we have Rey Mysterio versus Andrade Cien Almas in a two out of three falls match. I thought I'd be like this the whole match. Um, I think my things on this is that this is getting old. Point one. Point two, they eventually have to have a hair versus mask match. Maybe they'll do that again for Survivor Series. They'll hold that off till WrestleMania. Or they could have a Zelina Vega on a forklift match. That's interesting. Again, WWE, if you use any of those two, the last two, the hair versus mask or the Zelina Vega on a forklift match, just send me a shiny quarter. That's all I ask. Um, for the, so Zelina Vega, she gets involved pretty early. 
the first pin was really quick, and I'm like, oh no, this is the beat. Oh, so good. Mm. And it was a dirty pin with the help of Zelina Vega. Like, Zelina Vega was literally holding Andrade's leg on top of the rope. The ref didn't see it. That's not very good at his job. So, so this was a two or three fall, so that was the first fall. And then it got, then it picked up a little bit. Um, oh, he did that. Uh, Huracurana. To the floor. That was awesome. When you do that kind of weird, like, top rope flop, that, that flop splash. Uh, Vega keeps keeps on getting involved. Uh, Andrade, again, that, that weird twist kick is thing. Oh, then his knees ate the turnbuckle. That, that, I have a bad knee. That just hurts me. Then they're, they're like either botched, either a Lucha Destroyer or a Canadian Destroyer. Because the way they landed, it was like halfway in between. You're like, ew, that looked terrible. For some reason, this was a really boshy show. This is why I drink bottled water, folks. One, I never drink the water in Florida. It makes you do funky things. It makes you do stupid things. And I guess the water in Canada is the same. Maybe that's why people just drink beer. Shout out to you, Labatt Blue. Triple X, I think. Yeah, I forget what Labatt says. I want to say it's Labatt, Labatt Blue. Molson Triple X. What was the other? Maybe it was Labatt something. I don't know. That's the only thing Canada's good for. Is that they have good Canadian beer. Which actually tastes better than Budweiser. And Coors Light. Keystone Light. Natty Light. Is there any good American cheap beer? Oh, Michelob's pretty good. Yeah, Michelob's good. And Foster's. Foster's is Australian for beer. Cheap beer. So with all that being said, um, there were a whole bunch of roll-up attempts. Eventually, Andrade gets the Hammerlock DDT with the stank with the ankle wrap. Whoa. And he just went straight up two out of three matches. There was no third match. Whoa. So they're doing things differently. They're listening to the WWE audience, which is, I guess, a good thing. And then we had the Stone Cold promo. That was okay. It is what it was. It talks about the King of the Rings starting. And I guess this is trying to counter the G1 final, the G1 tournament they have in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And I think it's starting next week where they're having the matches, so that'll lead up to the September pay-per-view, which I have no idea what it is yet. So I don't think it's, I don't think it's Clash of Champions. I think that's in October. I honestly forget. Maybe they'll just call it King of the Ring. But the thing is, they're having the matches start like weeks early, and that's going to lead up because I think it's five weeks. The next pay per view would be sometime, I think, midish September. So I don't know what they're going to call that. Although I should look it up. I should know this. I should do some journalistic background stuff, but. Yeah, right. Like, I have time for that. But instead of what I do have time for, is to watch some Drew McIntyre versus Cedric Alexander. This was actually the match of the night. Uh, Drew's just such a brute. He just, oh, he had that one shot. I heard that here in Florida. I heard that from Canada to Florida. That broke the sound barrier. That was utterly amazing. Um, Drew's just such a bruiser. Um, again, it was kind of boshy still. So it was like a weird spinning DDT, and Drew really saved Cedric on that one. Drew's an utter professional. He, he could have gone to town. He could have gone to work for himself, and no one would have known any, di known any different. No, he, he saved the back of Cedric Alexander's head, I think. 
Uh, oh, he has that Razor's Edge buckle bomb. Oh, that's so awesome looking. Uh, the top rope. Turning slam he did. And whoo! That shot. And this was not the only Bosch. It's just, I don't know, really, she threw out. Full show. Again, drink bottled water or beer in Canada. Do not drink tap water. Tap water is something in it. it makes you botchy. <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, I'll tell you what, then Cedric Alexander did hit the lumbar check on Drew outside the ring. And wow, even Drew can sell that lumbar check because he just dropped like a sack of potatoes. That was good. I mean, this was fun, though. This had that big event feel. There's a top rope Spanish fly. You hit a top rope Spanish fly. I'll tell you what, you know you're getting at least a cheeseburger from this guy, because I, I, I love me some Spanish flies. Uh, and it was just amazing that he that he didn't sell that more. And I mean, oh, Cedric sold that Claymore kick. He did a flip. It was amazing. This, folks, was actually an amazing match. This was a surf and turf quality match. Uh, then there was a No Way Jose Robert Rude match, <laughs> which was kind of somewhat interrupted. Even Kevin Dunn is boshing things up. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's going to make it. I feel shame. But yeah, even he boshed that up. And did we see a Damien Sanda sighting? Or a. Stone Rockwell, or a Stone Rockwell sighting <laughs> from Impact? Is, is the WWE stealing Impact Impact enhancement talent? Ah, that sounds so bad. Oh, you would be at the bottom of the totem pole. You want to be an Impact enhancement talent, I guess. And then being picked up to be in the WWE in, in No Way Jose's tongue line. Well, this was a pretty quick match. Now we always got a little, little start. And Robert Roode then just did all the classic Robert Roode things. Again, he sells one of the best spine busters. Arnold Anderson has number one spine buster. Robert Roode's probably like two or three. So I know um, we used to do it really good too. You know, Booker T or Stevie Ray did a really good spine buster too. Uh, this was a quick match. Bobby Roode won. Robert, Robert Roode won. Hey, it was a ham sandwich. I just wanted to see Stone Rockwell get, get involved. Or is it, yeah, Stone Rockwell. Rock Stonewall. I forget. Damien Sando, though. Then we have the Paul Heyman interview. He's like, what do I tell Brock? There's no rematch. Tough luck to you, Heyman. Then it was weird because it went to commercial and we come back and there was a Revival versus Lucha House Party match was taking... Taking place. It was a pretty fun match. The Revival were doing pretty good and holding on against the Lucha House Party. Again, they for for I mean what I could see of it, it was a classic wrestling match. And all of a sudden, our truth comes in the ring. The whole loser 24 24 7 championship people come in chasing after him. Drake Maverick falls down. Poor Drake Maverick. I don't know if he did that or to make fun of Titus on Titus O'Neil, but he took a tumble. <laughs> that was funny. Poor Drake. Poor Drake Maverick. Oh wow! I'm no longer gonna call him Rockstar Spud. Wow! I just realized that. I'm learning. So I'm learning something, folks. I'm retaining something, which I guess is always good. Uh, so then, twenty-four, the loser locker room came in chasing the twenty-four-seven championship revival pin, our truth, which is which was pretty fun. And then they then they they dual pin them. So they're co twenty-four-seven champions. Then Carmella comes in the ring, distracts them. Our truth is now a twelve-time. 
12 time, 12 time champion, which means he's held the belt more often than Ric Flair and John Cena. No, I think he's still a couple short, I think. But, yeah, so he won that belt. He's the, and then they did like a Yaki Sax Scooby Doo thing where he goes one way. Or, or yeah, like he, he goes in, he goes in, in, in one side. Big Maverick chases him through that side. And then he comes out the other door. So it's like that whole Scooby Doo. Like, <laughs> oh, I should do that. That could be a bonus. I have to make two bonus videos sometime. Two bonus ideas. Two bonus ideas. Let me write this down. If I write it down, I might actually get it done. Two bonus videos. Yakety Sax 24-7 and Becky Lynch Inferior Natalia Superior and you'll see what I mean because that's an old Dr. Smooth Brandling thing about Autobots because I saw that and I was so happy that one night. I'm like, yes! Transformers. But I'm not here to talk about Transformers. I'm here to finish up with the 24-7 Championship. So I'll say I'll just give it I'll just give this first part. It was fun. It was, a, it was, it was actually a cheeseburger. They're actually doing so much for the 21st Henry Championship. Even the Revival co-held the belt. That's pretty cool. It's, it's adding prestige to this belt that people really poo-pooed upon. I thought it was going to be dumb. I've kind of changed my thoughts about it, though. This is, kind of, this is really fun. Uh, then in the back... Elias is bragging about how he has his, he's a 12 time better than Ric Flair, better than his idol of John Cena. Uh, 787, 24 7, 7 11 European TV title, and, and he had some more numbers in there. Then Elias just whacked him in, in the back with a guitar. Elias is now 24 7 champion. That's the way it should be done. The sneak attack. And therefore, that gets a cheeseburger rating. Oh, wow. So then we get to a Roman Reigns recap. Uh, Natalia comes out. The crowd boos her. Well, they don't boo her, but they just is boring. And I have to say it, Natalia is boring. Mainly because she sounds like whiny Kmart mom. I want to see your manager. I'm not pleased with the service I'm getting. Where is your manager? I need to speak to your manager. I need to call corporate on you. You're not promising. So again, I can understand why. And then Sasha Banks comes up. Oh my gosh. She lost some weight because she's a little less in the booty department. Also, those trunks are getting less. Those those, those trunk bottoms are, are are getting less and less, 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 and less, and less, and less. Whoa! Someone must nair down there. Hey, I call it as I see it. And her booty's not as bubbly looking. And then she took off her purple hair, which was kind of funny because because even the announcer said, "Hey, her her hair looks weird." She was wearing a wig, and then she's like blue hair. I don't get it. Uh, listen, look at this. 
There's no color going in there, folks. So she turned on. So, so she then attacked Natalia, kind of brutally, threw her all over places, especially with her. What she say? Dislocated elbow. Yeah, you can dislocate your elbow. That makes actually sense. Um, Natty just probably wants some time off. I honestly thought this was going to be a retirement speech from her. So then she started to get all teary-eyed about her father, Jim the Anvil Nightheart. I forget if it's been a year. I'll also go back into my video archive when I did my tribute to Jim the Anvil Nightheart. But yeah, she got all teary-eyed. Sasha came out gave her a hug and then just punched her in the face. Uh, Becky comes out to make the save. Becky eats a whole bunch of chair shots for her efforts. So eventually this is going to lead to Sasha Banks. Sa Sa Sasha Botch. Versus versus Bocce Lynch. Bocce Lynch. Wow. Even I'm Bocce today. We'll see how that goes. Then next we have Viking Raiders versus Carter Mason and Sebastian Suave. Really? I couldn't think of anything better. You couldn't take Aiden King or... Rock Stonewell. He couldn't have stolen them from Impact Wrestling. He chose two jobber McJobbers. They still do the war chant, but the I think the Canadian crowd's a couple years behind. Again, they're still going, Ole, 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 Ole. They still go, War, 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 War. So we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm bored with this. I want to see them actually go against someone decent. The Jabra matches are fun. It's a total squash, though. I think the only thing during, the only thing that made this even bearable is that Corey Graves was just making fun of Canada. Boo, Canada. Well, by making fun of Renee Young. And... I mean, one time, he was speaking French. And I think he said, stop speaking Canadian. Maybe even I said that. Stop speaking Canadian. But this match is a toast. Piece of toast. Then we have the Kabuki Warriors versus Alexa and Nikki Cross. You know, Alexa's short compared to Kyrie Sane. But gosh darn, is Nikki tiny compared to Kyrie Sane? And Kyrie Sane's short con in comparison to Asuka. So Asuka is the tallest. Kyrie Sane, Nikki Cross, and oh no, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Alexa Bliss, and then like Nikki Cross. That must be weird. And I feel so bad for Asuka because. She wrestled Nikki Cross in some amazing matches, and she's getting absolutely buried here. I feel so bad. So sorry that she ever left NXT. I feel even, even more sad for poor Kyrie Sane after she left NXT. I don't think she realized this was going to happen to her. I'm sorry. Um, then we got some Kabuki flying because. At one part, uh, Alexa Bliss started off with Kyrie Sane. Uh, she 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 got tagged in, I think, by Nikki Cross. Uh, Nikki goes to the, or Alexa winds up in the zone area for the insane elbow. Again, another botchy thing because she she got caught up in the ropes somehow. You cannot get her balance in the ropes. They have to do a better job with the ring crew, folks, because this was just a whole bot botchy night. Uh, the crowd was kind of quiet. She went flying, though. She did a cross body all the way to the bottom. That was amazing. So that was some Kabuki flying. Um, Asuka did go for the cover. And you could hear the ref, hear the ref calling the spots. Oh, God. That life mic is the enemy of the referee. Uh, there was Nikki versus Kyrie Sane. And, uh, damn, darn, Nikki's tiny. Uh, Bliss gets upset because she thought he had her pin. Oscar's is just, just a beast. I have no idea. Uh, insane 
hit the elbow, but then the other person, I think she hit the elbow, and Nikki crossed Alexa, pulled her out. Uh, they, they brawl a little bit more. Nikki tags in, hits the swing neck breaker, tags in Alexa for the twisted bliss. Alexa and Nikki go over. It really wasn't a bad match. This was a cheeseburger match. Then we have the then we have a quick Seth promo, and then it came out to be Seth Rollins versus the phenomenal AJ Styles. Seth comes out strong. AJ's smart. Um, he starts to go after the the ribs and mid mid cage a little bit. He, uh, he can still, he can still, he let the club, he also let the club take the bumps for him, because um, Gallows caught Seth in his suicide dive. They teased a pile driver on the apron. Oh, how I love to see a pile driver on the apron! Oh, a pile driver from the apron to the floor. Oh. WWE would never ever do that, unless it was like WrestleMania. And it was on a table with a crash pad underneath. It would be so protected. It wouldn't even be funny. Um, AJ again. He does the combo. Seth counters with, with the sling blade. Uh, of course, he gets distracted by the ref. So there's a setup distraction. Uh, Carl <laughs> Machine Gun Anderson distracts the ref. Gallows pushes Seth out of the way. Eventually, they get tossed. AJ's upset. Um, and then the... the the club come back running in, beat up Seth Rollins. But it's a DQ finish, baby. But it's different. So it's a dusty cheeseburger. And then um, Ricochet comes in to save him. He just gets flung out of the ring. He goes flying. Um, again, that's, again, they're setting up for the Super Styles Clash. Yes. And then Braun comes out, lays out everyone, gives Seth the belt, and that was raw. That was it was a fun raw. It's hard to complain about it. Um, so I'll check my email. I'll send out any appropriate video, video dedications, and I'll see everyone tomorrow for the SmackDown show. Because remember, this is a normal week. Oh, no, it's not. Um, so the plan for this week, today is obviously... Raw, so this will probably go up tomorrow morning ish. Um, SmackDown's Tuesday, that goes up Wednesday at the latest. Uh, Impact Friday, NXT's this weekend, so I might do an added video on Saturday. And then next week, I find oh, it's next week does so much wrestling. Oh, now that I'm actually following stuff, it's next week it'll be Sunday, I'm off, Monday's Raw, Tuesday. SmackDown Friday Impact, and then Saturday, depending on how AEW wants to do it, it's going to be all in. Wow, stuff to do. Everyone have a good night, folks. I have plotting to do. Bye.